This is George Dion with Metal Express Radio, and I'm here with Vinny Apice. He was the drummer of the Dio-led Black Sabbath and Dio solo band. How are you doing today, Vinny? I'm doing good. Very good. Um, Rhino Records is going to be releasing the deluxe editions of Black Sabbath's Heaven and Hell and Mob Rules. You played on the Mob Rules album, and you joined Black Sabbath in the middle of the tour for Heaven and Hell. Uh, how did... How did that opportunity come about for you? Um, well, I was, uh, I was, I'm still living in California, so Los Angeles, and uh, I got a call. I was in Chicago actually doing a Ludwig drum shoot for all the drummers uh, that Ludwig had, and it was really a cool event. And uh, <clears throat> got a call saying uh, somebody from Black Sabbath called. I went, ah, okay. So when I got home, I think it was the next day, I called the number, and it was a tour manager for Sabbath. <clears throat> they told me that they were in town for four days, and Bill Ward left the tour, and they're looking for a drummer, and they heard about me. So uh, uh, and then he asked me if I wanted to come down to the hotel and meet Tony tonight. I said, yeah, that'd be great, you know? And I went down to the hotel. This was like in Hollywood. Yeah. Ho Hollywood, of course. <laughs> and uh, I went down and I met Tony. Tony came into the room and he had an album under his arm, which was my band Axis. It's a three-piece band. And it was re uh, produced and recorded by Andy Johns, who did a lot of Zeppelin stuff. So there was some good sound and drums on the record. And good, it was a good, really good band. So Tony liked the record. He said, this is good. You know, he, he liked my drumming. And we hit it off really well. He invited me the next day to go down to the rehearsal studios. And uh, I did. And I met uh, Geezer, Ronnie, and Jeff Nichols, keyboard player. And then we started working. Uh, he said, what do you want to play? And I just happened to hear Neon Nights on the radio. I didn't know the song, but I heard it. And um, so, well, how about Neon Nights? I knew the tempo was kind of fast and it didn't, it stopped once. So kind of easy. So that's the song we first played together. And then, uh, and then they were all happy that it seemed to fit. And they said, well, you want to do it? And I said, yeah, absolutely. So that's how I got in the band. Awesome. And you may not have appeared on the album, uh, heaven and hell, the studio version of it, but the current deluxe editions contains two live shows, a couple songs from Hartford, Connecticut, 1980, and a performance from Hammersmith Odin in 1981. You were obviously appeared in those performances. Yeah, yeah, that that's me. Uh, I haven't even seen these albums. I don't know what's on them. <laughs> <laughs> I just actually talked to Rhino yesterday. I said, "Can you send me some copies of this so yeah. I I could have them for myself and I know what what's on them and all that stuff." So, do you remember the Hammersmith Odin show? Um. I know it was 40 years ago. I, you played tons and tons of gigs. Well, those, those were amazing shows because we did four nights in a row. Yeah. And, uh, and I remember before that, the, the gig, uh, a couple of weeks before, Tony told me that maybe Jimmy Page and uh, John Bonham will come down and check it out. And I was like all excited. Wow, that would be unbelievable. I'd love to meet Bonham. I never met Bonham. So... Before the gig, I don't know how long, it might have been a week or so before, that's when Bonham died. And uh, so, I went, ah, oh, shit, that's so close. But I, <clears throat> you know, something tra tra tragic like that. So I never got to meet him. They didn't come down. But I think uh, Brian May came down, and he, uh, he got up and played with us one, one of the last nights. He jammed with us. Oh, that's and awesome. Such a nice guy, such a sweet guy. And... Uh, he jammed with us a couple of times, so it was really cool. I think he played uh, Mob Rules or something. <laughs> I'd actually like to hear and see that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so but that was a that was a great gig. There were four nights sold out. You know, the Hammersmith Odeon is so, so so much history there. I think even the Beatles played there, and right. uh, old old place right in the center of London, and uh, fantastic gig. Really cool. After the tour ends, you guys hit the studio to record Mob Rules. Uh, what do you remember about heading in for those sessions? Well, 
Uh, during the, the tour, actually, we got a call from Warner Brothers and they wanted us to write a song for the movie Heavy Metal. And it was a rock movie, an anim animated rock movie that was, they were putting together. So we had a couple of days off in England and we wound up going into John Lennon's house. This is after he passed. It was owned by Ringo, I believe. And there's a big studio in there. So we went in that house for a couple of days and uh, we wrote and recorded the Mob Rules. And it was all finished in two days. And that's how we got that song. And then uh, that kind of cemented me in the band more. That now we got a new recording everybody's excited about, every, including the band, that it came out so well. The record company loved it. <clears throat> because I was in the, under the pretense of, uh, I was in the band until Bill Ward came back. Right. You know? And then when we did this, uh, this kind of, like, oh, this this is pretty good recording with Vinny, you know, so kind of cemented me in a little bit more. So was there issues with the band at the time, at least between Ronnie and, and the guys from Black Sabbath uh, touring out on this because they didn't last much longer beyond the album? Uh, everything was good. Uh, after the tour, we had a, some couple months off. And then we got together and started writing in, in California. Tony and Geezer uh, lived, came over to, to California. Ronnie and I lived here. And that's, uh, then we started rehearsing every day in the studio, writing. And we put together the whole album that way, you know. And it, things were still good. And then uh, the album came out, and then we went on tour, and everything was cool. Everything was really good. It was just after that tour when things started falling apart a little bit during live evil you know the next album which was live so uh but up until then everything was great we were having a great time <laughs> the band was playing great together yeah. the band always plays great together so i don't know what broke the band up it's not i wasn't involved in the business end of it so i don't know did you have the option of staying in the band or were you just i want to do this thing with ronnie i was i had the option pretty much of staying with tony and geezer <clears throat> and uh, Ronnie asked me, you know, he said, I'm going to, he had a solo deal all along. He was going to do um, a solo album while he was in Black Sabbath. And uh, he would have invited all his friends on the album, different musicians and stuff. But since things are turning dif differently, uh, he thought I'll use that solo deal to start my own band finally. So I decided to go with Ronnie and, and put this band together. And, um, and that's how we put Dio together and uh, did the Holy Diver record. It was the first record. So. What do you remember about recording uh, that? Was there a lot of uh, uh, kind of pressure to kind of live up to, you know, you guys were all band guys before this, and he's going out solo. There was a lot of pressure behind recording Holy Diver. And nah. No. Nah, yeah, matter of fact, it, it was like all fun. I mean, we were nuts. You know, we'd go, we go, we did all this work at Sound City and they let us destroy the building. And, you know, we used to just they had games they had to play like pinball games. We used to open them up and put things in there so you never lose the ball and wreck the soda machines and the candy <laughs> machines. They let us do so everything we wanted to do in there. It was kind of like every every uh, night at seven o'clock, you know, that's when we started. It was boys night the boys club oh, there you go, go there and smoke pot and they'd make drinks and we would write and and create and there were never any songs written we did everything <laughs> in the studio and uh it was just a great great happy time and uh we didn't think twice about oh this has got to be as good as sabbath you know we weren't thinking like that we were just going in doing what we do band sounded great together we got vivian on guitar and jimmy on bass and we just let it flow it was all natural organic kind kind of thing and uh there was never any pressure to to it's got to sound as good as sabbath or better or whatever we could do and then um, it just came together and when people heard it they flipped out you know like holy diver and stand up and shout bam was on fire you know totally on fire. yeah so you and Ronnie go back to Sabbath in 1992 for the Dehumanizer album. 
Well, that de- Dehumanizer album, they were working with Cozy Powell. Okay. It was, uh, uh, I wasn't involved yet. And then Cozy, it was going very, very slow from what I heard. And they were spending a lot of money on, on time and all that stuff. So at one point, Cozy was riding a horse and he fell off and he broke his pelvis. He couldn't play. So then they, now what do we do? Let's call Vinny. So they called me. I go fly to England. This was in England that they were doing this record. And then uh, we all hooked up, got uh, got on the same page again. They had about two or three songs written, you know, nothing recorded, but written. And uh, demo recordings, I think it was. And when I got there, it was full, full steam ahead, you know. When I'm in the band, it goes quick. <laughs> you know, I'm easy to work with. We all get along good. And we started really knocking out these songs, you know. And uh, we had a house in England that Ronnie and I stayed at. It was outside of uh, Birmingham. And that's where we'd rehearse. Tony Giza would come over and we'd rehearse in the living room. You know, it's small amps, small kit. And uh, it was very productive. And then I'd record stuff on the cassette, you know, all the riffs that we had. And we'd listen to them see what, uh, to see which one we liked to work on. So that's how the Humanizer was born, you know, the rest of it. So it started with Cozy, ended with me. I think it's a fantastic album, but I was reading uh, online that Tony wasn't a fan of it just because of the money that it cost. Oh, really? I haven't heard that. <laughs> well, <laughs> that wasn't my fault. I, <laughs> I <laughs> right. expedited the thing. Um, they, that's what I'm saying. They spent, from what I heard, a lot of money you know, trying to work. Uh, Ronnie and Cozy weren't getting along, first of all. So okay. that's a problem there, you know, and uh, it, it doesn't make for, a, you know, a good uh, working relationship when we're not getting along. So so that's where probably uh, the money was spent. And then I came in and we did it uh, fairly quick. I mean, we did have to fly back and forth, you know, Ronnie and I, maybe three or four times because we didn't stay in England for months and months and months. We go and stay for a month, come back, come home, go back. So we're going back and forth. But, uh, um, you know, the album was a kick-ass ra- album. Sounded great. A lot of people, it's like a cult album. It wasn't that big because at the time it came out, grunge was coming in. Yeah, it's the 90s. It's tough. So the music industry changed a bit, and we were kind of the dinosaurs, you know, the heavy metal <laughs> dinosaurs. <clears throat> and, uh, and then the grunge was in. So <laughs> that's what happened. Was it always meant to be a one and done deal? A what? Was it meant to be a one album and then Black Sabbath done uh, with Dio and? No, it was meant to be. You know, they got back together. It was meant to go on a little bit, but uh, as the usual history points out, uh, it didn't. And I think uh, at that point, what happened was. The, we were doing a tour. There were smaller places, you know, like 3,000 yeah. seaters, 4,000 seaters. And then um, the last two gigs were Ozzy's retirement gigs. He was <laughs> supposed to retire, believe it or not. Again? Yeah, ni- that was 1992. <laughs> this is the first yeah. time. The first, the first time. time. I got a poster up there. Actually, it was November... 1992, 14th and 15th, <laughs> at Irvine Meadows in, in, in California. And they got offered to play on the show. Ronnie didn't want to play on the show with Ozzy. So, uh, um, so that kind of broke the band up, you know. So Ronnie didn't play on those two shows. But we got Rob Halford to sing with us. And uh, that was quite interesting because Rob only had one day to rehearse <laughs> in <laughs> And he came down and we had to learn, you know, 12, 15 songs. And uh, a lot of the songs were songs that we didn't play together. You know, right. some of the old Sabbath stuff that we didn't play together with Ronnie. So we we're all a bit on edge, you know, like, well, we don't have that confidence of it's the same show we've been playing for six months. You know, you go on stage and you know, the, to know the set. This was all like fairly new stuff, you know couple songs we repeated that we knew very well so it was a, quite a gig but rob did great people loved it and then um now was the end of the band you know 
again. Again. And then you and Ronnie moved back on to the Dio band and yeah. 2009 rolls along. You give it one more, one more try with uh, black Sabbath and it's heaven and hell. <laughs> well, and- I actually, even before that, it was uh, two, in the year 2000, uh, or 1990, was it 1999? That sounds so far away. I know, so right? Um, they got together for a reunion tour. And, That's right. Yeah. You know, they got together for that. And then Bill Ward had a medical problem, you know? And so they called me, call Vinny. <laughs> <laughs> I was on tour with Ronnie and they were playing really big places, you know, this is with Ozzy. So I had made this decision to go do the rest of their tour. You know, it was only about, I think it was four weeks, you know, <clears throat> I had to work it out with Ron and, um, I mean, he wasn't thrilled about it, but you know, it was a good move for me as far as, uh, who gets to play with the original Sabbath and playing, you know, 50,000 seaters every night and stuff. So I did that. So I played with them with Ozzy too. And, uh, I think I, I'm the only drummer besides Bill Ward that played with Ozzy and, and Ronnie in Black Sabbath. And uh, so I did that. And then uh, the next tour they did the next year, Bill was OK. So I was on tour with them. This is the year 2000. I'm yeah. on tour with Sabbath with my own bus, only two people on the bus. And uh, I was there in case Bill Ward had a medical problem on stage. <laughs> so I never played. It was the weirdest tour. You pull up to a venue, though. I get ready just in case I had to jump on the drums, and it's the weirdest tour. So that was another time. And then, uh, then comes uh, nineteen, uh, no, two two thousand seven. Um, actually, it was six that Wendy calls me, tells me they're back to they're uh, releasing a Dio Years album, and they got uh, two or three new songs on it. The record company put it out there, said it would be great if you guys write another couple songs and we could put this in with the uh, Dio Years record, you know. This uh, was all the Dio songs with Sabbath. So they did that, and then they wanted to... uh, Well, they didn't record them yet. That's what happened. They were just about to record them. But again, it was with Bill Ward's playing the drums. It's going really, really, really slow. But finally, I think they just came to a decision, let's call Vinny. (laughs) It's the third time I fly out. Yeah, I fly out. And then it was at Tony's house. We were recording. And uh, we hung out, blah, 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 blah. And then after hanging out, I haven't seen everybody in a while, so the ice was broken. And uh, we, we we were like back to normal again, like nothing ever happened. And uh, that night I started getting a drum sound and that night I got one song already, you know, so it only took a couple of days and I finished the three songs they wanted to do. So uh, that's how it started. Then it came out. uh, We want to do a tour. Okay, let's do a tour. So then the tour went so well and then we were playing great together. 2007. Uh, So that tour ended in like 2008 and it was, uh, well, let's do an album. You know, we got a, uh, deal. Uh, so we did the devil, you know, did the album, and then uh, we did a tour with uh, some of that uh, in 2009. Um, and then we finished that, and we were scheduled to do, you know, let's keep going, touring, and do another album. But then Ronnie got ill, you know, so yeah. it continued, unfortunately. I gotta say, I saw that uh, Heaven and Hell tour in 2009, and for a, a man that was struggling with health issues, Dio was just phenomenal. The whole band yeah. was phenomenal. Like, I, I, I couldn't believe it in finding out later that he was sick. I'm like, nah, how could he be? He's such Unbelievable. A yeah. Before he went on stage, you know, the intro tape would be playing. Geezer would be on stage right. I would be on stage left a little bit with Tony and Ronnie, and, and uh, Ronnie would be talking, going, man, I got stomach i got like gas you know like uh, he even told tony one time he thought he was sick you know and tony said nah you're probably okay maybe you know something you ate or something that didn't agree or something like that so you know so even before st- going on stage he was <clears throat> complaining a little bit about it 
<clears throat> talking about it, not complaining. And then uh, he'd go out and just nail it. How he sang like that is unbelievable, you know. I never yeah. seen him. I've been playing with him so long, I never heard a bad night with Ron, you know. <laughs> exactly. Terrible. So you're kind of keeping the Dio essence alive with your band uh, Last in Line? Yeah, I got a band uh, Last in Line with Vivian Campbell, original Dio guitar player and from Depth Leopard. And uh, it was actually a, just the fun thing that Vivian was in touch with Jimmy Bain, who was the original bass player from uh, Dio and Rainbow. And they got in touch and said, hey, why don't we jam? Let's call Vinny and see if he's up for jamming. So we, they called me. We got together. We jammed. And we were just playing all the old Dio stuff. And it was a lot of fun. We were having a laugh, you know, trying to remember the parts and Viv, trying to remember the solos and all that stuff. Uh, and then we did it again. And I called my friend Andrew Freeman down who I know uh, for a while, uh, I knew he was a great singer, and he came down and just nailed the Dio stuff, just like, holy shit, man, this is incredible. So Viv was blown away, and Jimmy, so we decided, uh, you know, let's, let's do some gigs. We did a couple of gigs, we went to Europe, did like five or six shows, and then we got a record deal. So we made the first record, and uh, called Heavy Crown, and uh, then we continued touring, then Jimmy passed away, and we got our good friend, Phil Susan, who played with Ozzy and wrote some songs with Ozzy. And he's on the same page with us. So he's been in the band and we did a new uh, uh, second album and uh, called Last in Line 2. <laughs> and now we're, we're still together. We're working on the third album. And, uh, you know, it's been a little slow this year because of the crap going on. And uh, so, yeah, so we're keeping it alive. You know, we're still playing some of the old Dio stuff. It started out with we were playing all the old Dio stuff. Then as we yeah. made a new album, we started putting our songs in. And now we're getting the following and getting known for being a real band, uh, writing the original material and stuff. So the stuff we still do is Dio stuff, but, it, you know, kind of half and half, you know. So when you're putting these albums together, compared to how you said you worked on the first few albums, where it was like a boys club and you're all together and you're all in the same room, is it weird now where are you really not in the same room anymore? Yeah, we don't work this way. You were trying to <laughs> last in line. Same, you know, we have to be in the same room together because we'll just oh, start right. jam. Things happen, you know. Go out and get a cup of coffee. Come in, Viv's playing some riffs. Go, what's that? I don't know. Shit, let's record it. Boom, and I record it. You know, we'd work off each other. There's a lot of bands that have to be in the same room. So now we're trying to do uh, something via the internet, and uh, you know, it's a little different for us. You know, so uh, we hope to get. Some, I think we may maybe starting to do some gigs in the summer. We'll yeah. see what happens. You know, and then uh, we can get together and start finishing up this record and stuff too. Beautiful. So, yeah. So it's good. So on a side note, uh, you are also part of Joel Hoekstra's 13, which just yeah, came out Joel, a couple weeks ago. Joel's a good friend, a great guitar player. And I played on his first album. Yep. He got Tony Franklin on bass. And then Tony called me and said, hey, Joel, looking for a drummer, man. I thought you would be great on this. So I talked to Joel, and he, he was all up for it. So we did the first album together. And matter of fact, uh, Joel was doing the Rock Cruise about a year later, or I never met Joel. I don't even know him. And <laughs> I, I played on his record, and we do. He asked me to do the cruise. I went okay. So flew to Florida, and uh, and there we are. We never rehearsed. Russell Allen was on vocals, and um, Dave was on bass, who passed away. Uh, and there we are, on the boat. Hey, Joel, I'm Vinny. Nice to meet you. And we're gonna play. <laughs> Never rehearsed, but we got to rehearse for two hours on the ship in a room somewhere. And uh, we everybody really studied the songs. I mean, I wrote charts out and cheat sheets, and and we were really tight. It was amazing, you know. But it's funny. Hey, Joel, I'm Vinny. Nice to meet you. <laughs> and then I played on the second record, which is really cool, the 13. You know, yeah, the awesome. running games that uh, yeah. really. Get I do out. a lot of sessions, uh, you know, because this is my studio in here. It's uh, I actually every every Tuesday on Facebook, my Facebook, Vinny Apsey official, I do a drum show, yeah. and it uh, it's really cool. It's like a rock drum show, 
I teach a little in there and I tell stories. I play to some songs and it's a whole thing. People ask questions, you know, and it's a really unusual, cool kind of drum rock show. So it's every every uh, Tuesday at 4 p.m. Pacific time on Facebook. So might as well plug it. Yeah, why not? <laughs> <laughs> what else do you have going on? You must have something else you're working on besides... Uh, I'm doing that. I'm doing a uh, couple of sessions and then uh, uh, working with Last in Line. And then uh, I also do a thing started about four or five years ago. My friend invited me to Ohio. He has a Sabbath band. He says, why don't you come play with us, man? You know, I thought, hey, you know what? That might be fun. So that started this thing where uh, with them, I went there and we played like a lot of old Sabbath and then some Dio stuff. And we had a shitload of people show up, and I've done that about three times. And then they wanted me to do uh, a tour of Europe. So I have a band in Italy, kick-ass band. And about, uh, I mean, three years ago, I did 25 shows across a lot of Europe, a little small markets and stuff. And it did, it did so well. I've done two of those tours. Then I went down to South America. I did that. And we played, one of them was the Mob Rules uh, tour and we played most of the songs from Mob Rules, a couple of classic Sabbath songs, the old stuff, a couple of Dio songs, and people just flipped out, you know, because really I'm the only tie into the band anymore. <laughs> That's from, true. From the, from the original Dio band and original Sabbath with Ronnie, I'm the only guy out playing, really, right. and and promoting, not promoting, but playing that music. You know, and it's a lot of fun for me. You know, it's just, you know, I'm the guy. I'm the, you know, I even talk in between the songs on most of them. And we had a whole show. It hooked up. <clears throat> it, it went together well. So, so I'll uh, probably do another one of those at the beginning of next year. You know, excellent. This year, who knows what's going on? You know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It'll be over, but it's not crazy. <laughs> um, well, that's all I got for you today, Vinny. I really appreciate you taking the time to speak with Mel Express. Oh, it's nice to speak about it. And um, yeah, good to speak to you too, meet you and uh, keep an eye out for the records. I think it's March uh, 5th that's out or 15th. Yeah, and, it's, uh, it's coming out in early March. Mid, yeah, early March. Yeah, somewhere. So, all right. So check out Facebook too. That's right. right. 